It's the NFL on EA Sports, and we are inside of the very spacious Lucas Oil Stadium in downtown Indianapolis. Just as we were ready for air, it was the Colts emerging from the locker room to great fanfare here in Indy. They're ready to go as the Colts get set to match up with Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Naeem Hines, his first carry. And he'll hope that this is not a sign of what's in store as he has to fight just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the game's first play. And it's second down now. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. From the gun, here's Brissett. The completion good. This is Eric Ebron. It'll be a gain of 17 and an Indianapolis first down. They'll run on first down. Hines. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. Now on second and 13, Brissett. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Shaquille Griffin with a pick. Well, I tell you, you can't fault the pass protection here. He had all day to throw, and he just couldn't find anywhere to go with the football. And quarterbacks will tell you that after a while, they start getting antsy back there. So this is just a great job defensively to stay with these receivers as long as they did. Eluding the pressure right. Oh, he's going to take a shot right away. This is caught inside the 15. And he'll be taken down, but first he gets deep into Indianapolis territory. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. This is the Oklahoma State alum, Chris Carson. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. He has elite instincts from his linebacker spot. He's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile to stop that one behind the line of scrimmage. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. Here's Wilson. And off the deflection, it's caught. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. The catch good for six yards, but now it's third and goal. Sometimes luck is all you need. That was not even the intended receiver on that play. Well, Johnny on the spot, though. Yeah, and it turned into a big play for those guys on offense. They'll take it each and every time. A big play to start the drive got him in this position, but this defense has held firm since, and now it's third and goal. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape, and that is not going to get it done. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that, got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. No movement from the field goal unit. They've got four full yards to go here on fourth and goal to hit Pater, but they're going to go for it. They'll try and throw for it with Wilson. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Jabal Sheard wreaking the defensive havoc. A breakdown by the O-line at the worst possible time. Fourth and goal, and it leads to a sack. And I can just see it now the, on the sidelines. They're telling the quarterback, you've got to get rid of it somehow, some way. At least get it in the end zone and give us a chance. If we throw an interception, so what? A sack? We didn't even have a chance. Now on second and 13. Brissett, Ebron caught left side. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. On third down, Brissett, and he hits his tight end, Ebron. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. 
Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. This is Hines. And the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Making the stop that time, Bobby Wagner. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Here's Brissett. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. T.Y. Hilton, the intended receiver. Third down here. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. From the shotgun, it's Brissett. Ebron's got it. 23 yards on the play. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills. You want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. On second down, here's a run with Mack. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. They'll try and run for this with Mack. And he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. No score after one on EA Sports. Set to throw on first. And that is intercepted on the sideline. Wait, no. They'll say no. It was caught out of bounds. So this is just an incompletion here. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. They run with Hines. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. They'll run on first down with Marlon Mack. And they'll get him down right around the 16. Michael Kendricks, the linebacker, there to get him down. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. From the 16, Brissett to the end zone, but it's incomplete. Nothing doing there as the 13th play of the drive proves to be unlucky. Well, nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball way better than what we're seeing. Interestingly, that throw was probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell incomplete. We're set from the gun on third. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. So it looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. Vinatieri's kick is good. And the Colts hit the scoreboard first. It's 3-0. Well, that will go down as a 15-play drive, and it results in three points. So some disappointment? It's funny. We had our conference before the game with the offensive coordinator. And what did he tell us? I just want every drive to end in a kick, right? An extra point, a punt, or a field goal. Well, in this case, I think it is a little bit of a disappointment because it did end in a kick. But that type of a drive should end in the end zone. They'll start out on the ground with Carson. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half. And some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook. 
but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. So from the 36 now, first and 10. This complete to Lockett. Seven yards to pick up on the pitch and catch. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 42. Now that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. Opted to run for it. The decision, a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. Okay, just like that. Just like that. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. It's a gain of 12 first down Seahawks. Well, it certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you got a heck of a tight end candidate. To throw again on second down. Wilson, and that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range. So now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and 10. Escaping the pressure right. He can run for it, and he will. And the tackle made at the 13. He is well short of the first. The decision to tuck and run gets him three, but that's not enough. Now it's fourth. Second quarter, two minutes remain. Three-nothing, our score. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman. Coach will have highlights and analysis of this first half, one that's featured no touchdowns as of yet on either side. So his job's a little bit easier for this halftime. Need, need to get the coach some highlights here. Yes, we do. Field goals all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. Let's just feel it at the goal line. And he is going to be brought down at the three-yard line. Well, not exactly a banner return, so he doesn't give his offense a whole lot of room to work with. They've got to go a long way now to try and score some points. I do know this from experience. There will be a few comments muttered his way by the offense as they head out on the field. A run by Mack to start the drive. And he'll find a little space. He gets this up near the 10. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Now Mack. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the 20 at the 18. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they'll get a chance to talk it over after picking up the first down. On first and 10, Brissett. He's going to go deep for Funchess. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. Brissant. And that'll be incomplete. Now they took their shot all right, but it comes up empty. And it's fourth down. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. 
he was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. And he'll be out right at the 35. Good blocking there. Nearly sprung him as it is. It'll go as a 19-yard return. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. you got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Here's second and ten now from the 35. To throw again. Wilson sliding out of the pocket. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there. Trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum. Big play right in his hands. Unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. Wilson. And he's got his target. That's more. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one. Could we get a touchdown in this first half after all? It's first and ten. To throw again is Wilson. And this is complete to Moore on the comebacker. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. They get 17 on that one, move the chains, first down Seahawks. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. To throw is Wilson. On the move to his left. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. So they've been in the red zone three times, and it's yielded just three points. Can they find the end zone here on second and goal? 14, 14, it. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone for the Seahawk touchdown. Tyler Lockett there to make the grab. And the Seahawks have taken the lead. Extra point up and through by Myers. And the lead is now 10 to 3. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple of extra yards up to the 27 yard line. The Colts come to the line, ready to start their next drive. You've got less than 30 seconds left here in the half. You're well on your own side of the field. What are we doing here, Coach Davis? Well, I'm trying something on first down. And it's something that's safe. It's something that's been done many times before. A lot of people say it's not even worth trying, but I'm running a draw. I'm running a screen. I'm seeing if something pops. And if it does, that can alter my strategy and potentially get me some points. And if it doesn't work... Well, then you just run the clock out and go to the locker room. Now this will go for five up to the 33. That's it for the first half. Two more quarters to go. We'll have plenty more to see after the break. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. This will be taken in at the one. And his guys are going to start their drive right at the 20-yard line. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. They have the lead, now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 
It's a gain of 12 first down Seahawks. Back to back good plays have them on the move on first down. Throwing is Wilson. Nowhere to escape and he goes down. Jabal Sheard able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. And that's his second sack of the game, but this player, disruptive in all phases, whether he's going upfield, coming underneath, you name it. He's a big-time guy you have to block. Now following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Wilson's throw caught by Metcalf. And now the rookie's free. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. DK Metcalf, 64 yards. And the Seahawks are able to stretch that lead out a bit further. Still plenty of time left in the game, but now starting to pull away a little bit. Get some breathing room with that one. And I don't want people to think that NFL locker rooms are cookie cutter, that everyone's saying the exact same thing in every situation. But I do know that all 32 teams have an emphasis on starting fast. Game, being on the second half no matter what, with his first five minutes, first three, whatever. This was a big score to start the second half. On play action, we're set. Oh, incomplete. The rookie had it and lost it there. And it'll be second down. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Brissett sets to throw it. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Credit the secondary and credit the defensive game plan. They've been in his hip pocket all game long. They understood coming in that he was a big-time receiver. To throw, Brissett. In a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 38, and they are going to set up shop at the 40-yard line. Oh, man, Brandon, not a real good throw that time. It looked like he tried to put a little too much air under this one, and it turned into a floater. And defensively, this is a dream. He could have fair caught that one. That was way too easy. On first down, it's Carson. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. Throwing on second and eight, Wilson. And he almost had it defensively. Could have been a game changer there in the second half. Instead, it's third down. The turnover put him in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? You make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. You got to cash in and get some points. Completes it to Dixon. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. That'll pick up the first down for Seattle on a gain of 18. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. Wilson, after the play fake to Carson, flush to his right. Now he'll pull it down. And he will reach the eight-yard line before going out. The rushing numbers for Wilson, maybe down from earlier in his career, but he's still a threat to go, showing it there, picking up the first down. From the gun, it's Wilson. Steps away. And they're going to get him. They bring him down to the sack back in the 16-yard line. Well, that was point-counterpoint, wasn't it? They decided to throw for it on first and goal. Instead, the defense counters with pressure, and the defense wins, getting a big sack. It's second and goal, but now all the way back at the 14. Forced out to his left. He's going to take off with it. He'll wind up getting four there on his own, but it will leave him now with a third-down situation. 
looked at me like they adopted what my kindergarten teacher always said. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And finally, able to hold him in check, he'd been carving him up running the ball. That's the first time I think I've seen where the coverage was good downfield and they accounted for him and stopped him for a short pickup. Yeah, I don't think it was a big adjustment, but much more emphasis on making sure they knew where he was when he decided to take off and go. On third and goal, Wilson. And tight coverage there. It's knocked away incomplete. The free safety Malik Hooker there in coverage. This defense trying to do its part. Active hands on that play, but their offense hasn't given them much to work with. So they're not going to worry about it. On their side of the ball, all they're concerned about, can they create some scoring opportunities and help out that offense? They had it first and goal, three attempts, couldn't get it in, so they settle for three. Yeah, the field tends to shrink a little bit the closer you get to the goal line, doesn't it? It doesn't sound right, it sounds a little counterintuitive, but you run out of space to run the deep routes, so they can just sit on the shorter stuff if you're going to throw it. If you want to run it, there's just not as much space. They end up having to take three there. Try to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And some space here. There he goes left side, and he's going to score. It's a Seahawk touchdown. This D wanted to put it away before we even get to the fourth quarter, widening that margin a bit further. And while they won't just empty the bench just yet, if you're a backup, start loosening up. I think you'll get a chance to play before this one is over now with that type of a cushion. Myers connects on the PAT, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The Indy offense at the line and set to go. They have been struggling. I would imagine at halftime they went through some possible changes. Well, those changes aren't working, so now where do you go? I think that now it's much more in their head. And what I mean by that is, just what you said, you've gone over the changes. I bet they were pretty clinical at the half. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off by Quadre Diggs. And they will set up shop in enemy territory at the 42-yard line. Hey, watch the slant. Watch the slant. One left, one left. That's me. 36 power. After the interception, here's Wilson. He's going to take a shot right away for the end zone. And oh, it'll be intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And they needed a break. They needed to make a play here in the third quarter. Defensively, they did that. Now they got to go quickly and get some points on the board. And the best part is that they made their own break. Taking the ball away. Now they just look at their offense and say, guys, let's go. Come on, capitalize on this one. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Reset. It's complete here to T.Y. Hilton. 16 yards to pick up there. The Colts have a first down. Brissett now a perfect 8 for 8 to start the second half. Not bad. First and 10. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Sacked there by Jadevian Clowney. Got to assume this defense will be charging again here. It's second and 15. Back now in Indianapolis. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. On second and 15 now, Brissett. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. It's third and long for Brissett. And unable to connect, incomplete. Well, give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. Throwing, Brissett. He's going to go deep for Funches. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, at this stage of the game in the second half, down three scores, I guess they felt like they needed to push. And let's face it, it 
with this deficit, if they give up another score here after they didn't get it, does it really matter? Right. It really doesn't. They had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game. A throwing to start the drive, but that went incomplete. And the incompletion there stops the clock. Any surprise or throwing here late? Ordinarily, yes, because you would think enough is enough. They've got plenty of lead. But I've seen this a bunch of times as well. The defense is going to crowd the line of scrimmage. If you just hand it off inside, you're getting your running back popped a lot as well. Sometimes the defense dictates it. If they're going to crowd it, you may have no other choice but to throw it downfield. The Seahawks on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and four. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Carson. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. Third and medium, they opted to run instead of pass, and it worked. First down. Wilson now off the bootleg. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Tyler Lockett was the target there. That'll bring up second down. They're still throwing the football here, and obviously the incompletion stops the clock. That's a bad thing. Feels to me like they're just keeping them honest on defense because you know they're going to stack the line of scrimmage and try and stop any type of a running play. Short little passes may work in exchange of running plays. Keep the clock moving, keep them moving. Yeah, I guess you're right. If they can get some first downs, just as good as running the football. And the Seahawks on third down. They've hit it 50%, three and six to this point. This is third and four. Now it's Carson, and he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. The gain of five that time gives him the conversion and makes it first and goal. Play action. It's Wilson. They'll roll him out right. End zone caught. Touchdown, Seattle. Make it a hat trick for Russell Wilson. Three touchdown passes now as his guys continue to put this one out of reach. Extra point up and through by Myers. And that will extend this big lead. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> offense take care of the defense, defense take care of the offense. That didn't happen on the last possession. This is a chance for them to pick themselves back up and help their team. Yeah, we'll see if they can recoup and recover. Pressure from his right and he goes down hard, flat on his back. Jadavian Clowney picks up his second sack of the afternoon. We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, and with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. And he'll be stopped here well short of the first down at the 24-yard line. It's a seven-yard run, but it does bring up fourth down. They're already slim hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. They'll run for it. It's Mack. And boy, is he close. Did he get there? No, they're going to say he's short of the line to gain. The Colts unable to convert here on fourth down. And the Seahawks, they'll get the football back in outstanding field position. So first and 10 now from the 30. Now Wilson. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. And it is true. You can draft the fastest. You can draft the most athletic guys. But if they don't know the art of positioning, sometimes it's all for naught. In this case, in the right spot, help force the incompletion. Yeah, but had his hands on it for a second. Would have been a tough catch, though. Falls incomplete. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. They run again with Carson. And he gets this down to the 18, good enough for a first down. The drive stays alive, a third down gain of eight. 
Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. They run it with Carson. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. When this offense gathers to watch the tape, they're going to like a lot of what they saw. They put up big numbers, but they might fast forward through that last play. Oh, there won't be any fast forwarding, partner. I've sat in those sessions before. You end up spending more time on the bad. And this will be caught. And the carnage continues. It's another touchdown. Still an important piece of business to take care of. The extra point. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he will be marked out right there at the 20-yard line. The Indy offense at the line and set to go. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in a game like this and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And the coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build Just on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. And they'll indeed take a knee. A loss of a yard. It's now third and 13. Boy, and now they can't even get a playoff. Boy, and now they can't even get a playoff. And that'll set them back five. 